An entitled customer freaks out on me in my section at Target, demanding a specific TV that we did not sell. And despite his yelling and his screamings in front of my supervisors, managers, as well as a crowd of customers, I ended up putting this guy in his place and embarrassing him in front of the entire store. And it truly felt absolutely amazing. Here's what happened. So this all started days before Black Friday in the year of 2016. I no longer work for this establishment, so I will just name where I work, but not my location. I used to work at Target, and believe it or not, I really enjoyed my time working there. I worked in the electronics department. If you had any questions about TV, gaming consoles, computers, accessories, anything about tech, I was the guy. I was very friendly and always have those casual customers that come looking for me specifically when they ever have any questions. As I said, I enjoyed my job and was praised and complimented by many customers. So the incident happened a few days before the calamity known as Black Friday that every retail store dreads. On this particular day, I helped open up my department, setting up TVs and helping out with the displays. Meanwhile, I had to quickly train other employees who were not really familiar with the department since the electronics department was the most expensive department and the busiest. And while the day was indeed busy, it really wasn't anything crazy. Suddenly, lunchtime came around and I had to wait till my replacement arrived so we can keep the flow of customers going. I got to my lunch and I figured the day will be going very smooth without any trouble. But oh boy, do I wish I never forgot to knock on wood. As soon as my lunch shift was over, I was casually walking back to my department when as soon as my replacement saw me, immediately stormed away from the cash register and ended up telling me, good luck. I stopped and stood there confused and immediately asked her what happened. As she was walking away, in what looked like a fit of rage, she shouted towards me stating that he is looking for a TV. And then she disappeared. I began walking to my spot thinking to myself, oh great, this is going to be a lot of fun. As soon as I arrive to the register, I am met with this entitled Kevin of the story who is accompanied by what I would assume to be his family. A little boy, probably five years old, holds an Xbox One. The box was almost as big as he was. A girl who was almost as tall as I was and was probably about 15 years old. There were other family members, but these were the two that stood out the most as they had the most awkward looks throughout this encounter. I assumed my post and I took a deep breath and began the conversation. I looked at them and I said, Good afternoon, sir. Is there anything I can help you with? Is there any question that you might need answering? At this point, this Kevin was silent and was not giving any eye contact as if he was not acknowledging me being there in the first place. I thought to myself, okay, maybe he didn't hear me that well. The store is kind of loud and it's filled with people, so I'll just try it again. So I look at him and I say it again. Hello, sir. Is there anything I can help you with? And once again, this guy is silent, but his face looks incredibly upset. So at this point, my patience was wearing thinner to the point of no return, but I had to keep my composure and quickly responded to his silence. I looked at him again and I said, excuse me, sir, if you are not wanting any assistance, then I have to tell you to move aside so I can help other customers who are waiting to be checked out. Now, when I said this, this did not sit well with this guy in the slightest because he immediately fired back. He said, I'm waiting for the lady to come back. And when he said that, I said, I'm sorry, but she left to go on her lunch break. And that's when he had a sudden outburst out of nowhere. He said, are you kidding me? She left me here when she was supposed to help me find a TV that I want. I looked at him and I said, I apologize, sir, but this is my department. She was only covering my spot while I was on my lunch break. The entitled Kevin responds by saying, okay, did she tell you the type of TV I'm looking for? And I explained to him that all I know is that he's looking for a TV in the first place, but he simply wasn't having that. He then repeated himself. So did she tell you exactly? exactly what TV I'm looking for. And at this point, all I could do was apologize and say, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're looking for specifically. And when he heard this, he absolutely went off. He started screaming about how he has to now explain everything to me. And he really did not want to do that. And right now, I'm just standing there completely unfazed. It's honestly really hard to take him seriously when he is trying to be intimidating, but incredibly short. Now, by no means am I a tall person. I'm 5'8 on a good day, but sometimes measure at about 5'7", and I'm a fairly chunky dude who has a beard. This guy, however, looked to be in his mid-30s and about 5'3", maybe even shorter. Anyways, I assured him that she needed to go straight to lunch as soon as I returned, because her lunchtime was passed, and it was mandatory for her to leave and do that. In the middle of his shouting, many customers started looking this way, and were not going to bother with jumping in. At this point, I didn't care if anyone else jumped in or not. It's right about then that I noticed two supervisors in the background 
around walking this way when suddenly one of the managers stopped the other two supervisors from coming over in my direction. By how they were moving their hands, I assume my manager wanted to see how I could handle the situation. So I decide to amuse them and show them exactly what I can do. Because honestly, handling my own family is more of a nightmare than listening to this guy. So I go on and I say, Sir, just explain to me what TV you're looking for. To remind you, this is my department. So I will tell you if we have what you're looking for. But still, this entitled Kevin keeps screaming at me. He starts shouting, I swear, if you're playing me like a fool right now, I will have you lose your job. As well as saying some other colorful expressions, if you know what I mean. I respond by saying, Sir, please refrain from using any kind of language as there are kids around. And if you continue to use an aggressive tone, I will refuse service and call security to escort you out. He then leaned forward onto the counter with one elbow, giving me his meanest look he possibly could. But before he said anything else, he lowered his voice barely. He looked at me and he said, I'm looking for a 50 inch TV that's priced at about $250. At that point, I knew exactly what he was talking about and I knew that we had no such TV with that size at that price. I look at him and I say, I'm sorry, sir, we don't carry that TV. But clearly that was the wrong thing to say to him. He freaks out and starts screaming, are you kidding me? You did not even check the system or even check the back and you're just going to tell me that you don't carry it? Are you robbing me from getting a TV that I want? You're nothing but a thief. In the middle of his shouting, I see both of his kids looking away. The little one was hiding his face behind the Xbox One he was carrying and the daughter was covering her eyes with her hand in sheer disbelief and embarrassment. And the other family members were shaking their head. But I still refused to be bothered by this adorable intimidation. I looked at him and I said, Sir, if you have an article or an ad, something to show me where you saw this TV, it really can help a lot. And when I said that, his anger quickly turned to the biggest smug expression that would probably make the Grinch jealous. He pulled out his phone, swiping through his phone to find the ad that he was referring to. Now, mind you, the entire time, he is still shouting at me, with this attitude basically feeling like he's going to prove me wrong. He found the ad and then shoved the phone straight in my face. He looks at me and says, This is the TV I'm looking for. Now you can't tell me that you don't have it when it is here in the advertisement. Try to prove me wrong and I will just make you look like an idiot. So at this point, I really wanted to put my hands on this man and send him flying. But instead, I look at his phone and I was completely amazed. Now, just as a recap, at the time of this incident, I work at Target. So when I saw him holding up his phone with an advertisement from another store, I kid you not, I gave the most satisfying slow motion in history from looking at his phone to then looking at him directly in his eyes while he still had that smug look on his face. I looked at him and I said, Sir, this is the Walmart app. Right away, I instantly hear laughter. But what made other people lose it more was when my very own manager burst into laughter, followed by two of my supervisors. Then a few more customers started laughing while I stood there now with a smug look on my face. He then turned bright red and his family was even more embarrassed. His son put down the Xbox and just hid behind it from my view and the daughter now had both of her hands in her face. He then tried to quickly bounce back from it. So, don't all retail stores have the same TVs? I look at him and I say, sorry sir, but the TV you want is a Walmart branded TV. Only Walmart carries that specific TV. Now at this point, knowing that he was backed into the corner and could not get out of this embarrassment, he quickly shouted at me by saying, fine, let me just buy what I have here so I can get out of this stupid store. So I quickly rang him up, he paid for his stuff, and quickly was out of the store. His whole family apologized to me, especially his little boy. I feel sorry for his family and them having to endure all this, and I can only imagine living under the same roof as this guy. As soon as his family left, I received a small applause by the customers that witnessed the whole situation, especially my supervisors and manager, who were still laughing while this all was going on. I ended up receiving a good bonus for the day, and I was dubbed the employee of the season. We don't have such titles in our store, but they made it up just for this occasion, and it absolutely felt amazing. The guy in that story was super obnoxious, like he clearly just made a fool of himself and had absolutely nowhere to go to try and recover from it. And that truly is the karma you would hope for when it comes to these types of situations. So hopefully this entitled Kevin can learn his lesson and try and keep his cool when he's asking for something from a store. Because as the old saying goes, you get a lot more flies with honey than with vinegar. And the Kevin in this story was nothing but an entire bottle of vinegar. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link 
link down below in the description. My job is blatantly overlooking me and refusing to give me the hours that I deserve, despite completing training almost five months ago and being undervalued to the point where I honestly don't know if I want to work here any longer. And at this point, I don't know what to do. So for a bit of context, I've been serving at a brunch restaurant since I was about 17 years old. So for a little over three years total, I've been working there. And while I know I don't hold a flame to some of the veteran servers who might read this, but I'd like to think that three years of waitressing experience is a decent amount. Anyways, I had to leave my brunch restaurant since I was moving for college. So I applied at a couple of restaurants in my town and I got hired at my first choice really quickly. The hiring manager told me that since I didn't have much experience with alcohol, she was going to start me as an expo for a couple of weeks so I could have some time to observe the bar and learn the alcohol menu a little more thoroughly. And you know what? I was totally down for this as I didn't want to be at my tables looking like a fool for not knowing what a greyhound is or for not being able to answer questions about the wine list. I got hired at the new place in early August of 2022. I work hard as an expo because I know they put me in the position partially so they could observe my work ethic and my attitude. It wasn't until the beginning of December 2022 that after literally begging, I was finally trained to serve, despite memorizing everything there is to know about the alcohol weeks prior. Now, keep in mind, I had been told that I would only be expoing for a couple of weeks, which had at that point turned into four months. I also never complained about the expo shifts. The only thing I have ever said to management about my position as expo is that I would like to start serving more. I have now been working there over five and a half months, and they still only give me one serving shift a week, and the rest is as an expo, even though I have been trained in service for two months. I don't know why this is happening, as I get good Google reviews almost every time I work. I also try to run the food at every opportunity I can, whether it's mine or not, and I get great feedback and upsells at my tables. I also rarely miss ring items or have sendbacks. To add insult to injury, they have hired two servers since hiring me that already serve more than me, simply because they're older. One of them literally has less serving experience than me. I know experience isn't everything, but it's frustrating to see them hire new servers when I've been putting in work for months to get more serving time. What am I doing wrong? Should I just call it quits and find a new restaurant to work at? I feel like I've earned my place enough to deserve more than one serving shift a week, and I'm starting to feel really dejected. I just don't get it. Maybe it's because of my age, but I feel like with the experience I came with, the fact that I've been earning my position for nearly six months is kind of crazy. What should I do? Honestly, it really feels like they're not taking you seriously as a server. It's like they're only giving you one day a week just to have any kind of serving experience, and then they're slapping on the training wheels once again, and then treating you as if you don't know what you're doing, which you clearly do know what you're doing. Like, this is unacceptable. You are essentially being walked all over, and they have no intentions of moving you forward. And I mean, it seems like they've made that abundantly clear after the first few months of employment. And that's not fair for you in the slightest. You said it best. You got this down the first two months. So the fact that they're limiting your hours and taking away from your opportunity to serve and do other things is honestly just really obnoxious and really rude. The management team are acting like a bunch of jerks. And I really think you can do a lot better than that because you already come into this restaurant with almost three years of experience. And the fact that they're not utilizing that to the best of their ability truly is going to be their loss when you find a better job that will actually give you the hours that you deserve. My entitled family constantly uses me as a free taxi service, expecting me to drive them everywhere and basically being very obnoxious people in general. Here's what happened. When my niece got married, she invited my parents and me because her thinking was that I could drive my parents to the event. I didn't want to go as I have a strained relationship with her mother and this would be the first event that I'd attend with her being present in over 20 years. Now, it wasn't the first time that I'd been used as a taxi for my parents, as my father had gone blind about five years before, and even before that, was always difficult. Losing his eyesight meant that he felt he should be the main character at anything he attended, so they were going to use me to corral him. Because of this, I phoned her and asked if my partner of three years could also come along, because with my father being blind in an unknown environment, my partner was willing to escort him to the toilet and things like that. She looked at me as though I was completely mad and said that she thought I'd do that. For the record, I'm a girl and I'm not going to the men's toilet with my father and showing him where the urinals are. That's just not going to happen. I just said, fine, you have to think about it, but let me know by the end of the week so that my parents can make alternative 
arrangements to get there. And after that, I finished the phone call. I got even more shocked faces that I would let my parents go to an event and not look after them. I pointed out that my parents were grown-ups who were able to go out and do things on their own. We didn't live with them, nor did we live near them, and already had obligations for that date. So us attending in order to babysit my parents was actually a major inconvenience for us. Now let's get something cleared up here. She had met my partner many times at my parents' house, so she knew him very well. She also did not invite my other sister or my brother, but instead only invited me. And this was because I was the one that my parents always asked to do stuff for them. And just like the fool that I am, I often just did that. I'm chatting up my mom the next day, and I tell her what went down with my niece, and she is mostly understanding. But it seems that she must have let it slip to my father, who cannot keep his mouth shut, as I got a phone call that evening telling me that I'm being ungrateful for demanding an extra invite to the wedding. I had just started to stand up for myself at this time, so I told him I wasn't demanding anything. In fact, I wasn't planning on going to the wedding as we had other commitments that weekend. I got the wailing and gnashing of teeth from him about how he was going to cope without me taking him to the bathroom, to which he was told in no uncertain terms that I was never going to be doing that, and I ended up ending the call. Two days later, my mom calls and tells me that my niece has done some reworking on the guest list, and there was now a spot for my partner to attend. And at this point, I said I'm gonna have to think about it. Oh, I'm supposed to call my niece and suddenly start saying how grateful I am? No, I'll let her know by the weekend as I had agreed. I spoke with my partner and we agreed on this occasion we would go and I emailed her at the weekend so I had it in writing what we'd said. Weeks passed and we go to pick my parents up for the wedding. My partner has offered to drive and be the sober driver so I can have a glass of wine with dinner, if anything. Our car is small, by the way. We pull up and my mom hops into the back seat behind my partner. I'm standing there with the passenger door open for my father, who is at this point just standing there. I tell him to get in the car, and he says, um, after you. And I point out that he is getting in the back seat as I'm going to be helping navigate. And as you could probably guess, he started to throw a temper tantrum. This is an 80-year-old man, by the way. He started screaming that he shouldn't have to get in the back seat. I tell him straight, either get in the car or go back in the house, and I'll call him a taxi. Eventually, everything goes off reasonably, apart from this situation and for the fact that he tried his BS again about the front seat on the way back. But thankfully, my partner stepped in and put a stop to that. Afterwards, he tried to make snarky comments about how he should be in the front seat. So the next time we were invited as taxi, we turned down the invite. Eventually, we got a four-door car later and we moved further away. He tried to do the whole spiel of saying that he's car sick a couple of times, claiming that he needs to sit in the front, but he was told that if he was going to get car sick and not taking the travel sickness tablets we got him, then it was simple. No more free trips. And funny enough, his car sickness suddenly got better. Just before, I went no contact with my niece and sister. Over their behavior over my father's estate, I was reminded by them how they did me a favor in inviting my husband to the wedding. So I reminded them about how we did a favor by stopping my father from being a pain in the butt at their wedding. It's honestly all just so toxic, and hopefully we never have to deal with them ever again. The fact that they would try and use you as a free taxi service, and as a free babysitter for your dad who's going blind is really, really toxic in my opinion. And these people definitely fit the bill. They're clearly just using you and they're trying to use every angle to make sure you drive them everywhere. So good for you for putting your foot down and saying, no, we're not doing that anymore. Sometimes people just need to hear that. You need to set up boundaries. Otherwise, they're just going to keep taking advantage of you. And honestly, you do not deserve to get treated that way. My spouse reveals to me that he has some credit card debt from 10 years ago that he decided to hide from me. And I really feel like our trust and relationship has been damaged and now I simply don't know what to do. So when I met my spouse, he was 23 and I was 19. We were both living with our parents. I was a student at the time and he was unemployed. He landed a good factory job at 24, paying $25 an hour. But I, at 20, was living off student loans at that point. We decided to rent an apartment together because honestly, our parents wanted us out. He paid for rent and groceries. I paid the utilities and part of the groceries. My entire monthly loan was always spent on these things. I also did most of the housework. I had a tutoring job at the college I was attending, but it wasn't paying much. Fast forward to 2020 and our landlord decided to evict us so he could sell the property. We made the choice to buy a house. At this point, I was working a job that made $70,000 a year and he had a job that made $66,000 a year. We signed for a new construction for $300,000 in 
$1,000 to be built in 2021. It was nothing fancy, and it was honestly cheaper than the used market. We agreed to a 50-50 split when it came to house finances. In 2022, I landed a job that earned me six figures. The consensus was that we would still pay the same amount of money towards a mortgage each month, but I would pay the utilities and the groceries. I still did all the household chores as well. Mind you, I had $30,000 in student debt, and he had zero. I paid off most of the welcome and municipal tax, so around $2,300. He paid $800 in total, and this was supposed to be a 50-50 agreement. In late 2022, after a lot of discussions with my spouse, I switched jobs for a lower-paying one because the workload was so intense that I was starting to develop unhealthy coping addictions. I now was making $80,000 a year. He got a raise and now makes $70,000 a year. Recently, we got hit with another $1,250 tax bill. I told him I would like us to split this bill 50-50, and he replied that he doesn't have the money. Only now do I find out that he has a huge credit card debt from when he was 18 years old. Plus, he's looking to trade in his 2020 perfectly working Toyota for a Mazda, which would cost him about $2,000 more. Meanwhile, I don't have the money to fix the clutch on my car. I'm tired of being a cash cow in this relationship. His 30th birthday is coming up at the end of the month, but I honestly don't even feel like celebrating it because he is seriously not acting his age. And at this point, I don't know what to do. That is super dishonest of your spouse. The fact that he hid all this debt from you and didn't mention any of it in the slightest, all while also still wanting to trade his car in and spend $2,000 on a new car is definitely a big red flag in my opinion. And it looks like the original poster agrees with that sentiment because they went on to say that the trust between them has been damaged. I think either way, having a serious talk about your financial situation and explaining to him that you feel like he's being irresponsible and very selfish really would be a good course of action to try and find some kind of common ground so you can at least both come together on the finances of your relationship. Otherwise, this is only going to get worse over time and it will only cause more frustrations in your relationship. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.